Hello, it's March 2021 and last July I recorded a performance video for the tune Home on the Range on this uh, Anglo concertina to demonstrate my new tablature that I've been working on, been developing uh, with the help of my good friend Kathy, who is uh, one of my customers. And the other day I had uh, an inquiry about this tune uh, had I got a lesson on it, and I thought I had, but I'd completely forgotten I hadn't done it, so I'm doing it now. It's an ill wind, as they say, because I've added a couple of new features to the tablature since then. And one of those is putting in words, which you can see on the right-hand side here. Uh, because I don't use button 10, which is the lowest button on all three rows on the right-hand side, I'm using that column to put words in. Because it's a song, it helps you find your way round if you've got the words there. And a brand new feature as of today is I put some chords in on the left hand side here. Now these lessons cater for both C, G and G, D and indeed any any kind of tuning you can think of. But basically C, G and G, D because they're the most common. So what I've done here, I've put a, a new column in called chord. And you can see it says C, G on the left and G, D on the right. So on the left of the oblique stroke, you've got the chord that you're playing if you've got a C, G. And on the right of the oblique stroke, you've got the chord that you're playing if you're playing a G, D. So for this bar number one, if you've got a C, G, it's a C chord you're playing with this left hand. And if you've got a G, D, it's a G chord. So it's just a nice way of knowing what chord you're playing. And if you are doing a pretty basic song like this that's got a pretty straightforward left hand, um, I think it's a good thing to know what chord you're playing. It might be handy to tell someone that's playing along with you as well. So that's a new feature. So watch out for that on the left hand side as we go down. You can see here, if you've got a C, G, this bar is D minor. And if you've got a G, D, it's A minor. Like I said, I've already done the performance video. So make sure you have a look at that. Maybe have two browser windows open so you can see the performance. You can get to that quickly and have the browser window open that's got this tutorial. I've got a few free tablature based tutorials on my website. Make sure you have a look at those, especially Danny Boy. That kind of really demonstrates the tab pretty well. So let's have a look around the page here. Up the top, we've got the title. It's page one because there are three pages. We've got the buttons along here. One, two, three, four, five. This is the way I number my buttons. It's not standard. Something peculiar to me. On the left-hand side, I number my buttons. One, two, three, four, five on all three rows. And on the right-hand side, we have buttons six, seven, eight, nine. We would have 10, but like I've said, I've used that column for words because there are no notes on button 10. So it's six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, all three uh, rows of buttons. Okay, and like I said, this isn't standard. A lot of the things that I do are peculiar to my music, to my lessons, but if you've been buying lessons from me, hopefully you're comfortable with that. I mean, the end result is the same. You'll be able to play a tune, and that's all we really care about, isn't it? Now, if you're playing a C, G, you're in the key of C major in this tune. And if you're playing a G, D, you're in G major. And if you happen to have a B flat F, I've got a, a really nice Jeffries B flat F, you'd be in B flat major. Okay. And what I basically do at the end of this tutorial is I go into Final Cut Pro and I retune all the concertina bits to the other uh, concertina. So, for instance, I'm using a C, G at the moment. So I, I will retune all the playing so it comes out in GD but my speech will be unaffected. It says that the main row is two so your main tune row is the middle row of this 30 button instrument. If you've got more than 30 buttons just ignore those extra ones at the ends and if you've only got a 20 button instrument sadly you won't be able to play this tune because you do need the full 30 buttons you need the notes on the accidental row. This will be the same for Wheatstone and Jeffries because there's nothing on the right hand side on the accidental row. So for once that's pretty straightforward, thank goodness. It says here, notes on the left hand side marked with an asterisk, like this and this and this, are part of the tune. We tend to think of the tune as being on the right hand side and the accompaniment being on the left. But here we've got notes that are so low that they come on the left hand side of the instrument and that is a bit of a feature of the Anglo concertina. Now if you're as old as me you probably sang this song at school. I certainly did that's where I, I got to to learn it. It's an American folk song it's got some great words uh, so let's make a start. So it says over here counting threes because it's a waltz this and the first bar is bar naught. 
That means to say that it's a pickup bar, not a full bar. You come in on beat three on the left hand side, button five, it's finger one, and it's main row, because if it's accidental row, I put an A, and if it's on the uh, row one, I put a thick board around it. So this is the middle row, the main row, button five, finger one, and we know it's part of the tune because it has an asterisk. So pull your bellows out before you start and count one, two, and play that note on beat three, and you've got your first note of the tune, which corresponds with the word O. So in the first full bar, which is bar one, if you're playing a C, G instrument, you're playing a C chord, and if you're playing a G, D instrument, it's a G chord. And how do we do that? On the left-hand side here, where we have button one, button four, button five, all on the push. If it's on the pull, I put a minus sign like here, you see? So these are on the push, like our first note was. So buttons one, four, and five, fingers four, two, and one. And you push in, and that top note is part of your tune. Okay, so if you go from the beginning, you've got, and that's the O oh, give. Okay, now you'll see these two dots over here. This is a repeat sign from musical notation, but turned on its end because we're heading down the page. So we're obviously going to come back to this point at some time in the song. This is where the verse starts. And having played everything on the left hand side so far, you're going to now go to the right hand side and play button six, finger one push, and button seven, finger two pull. Which sound like this. So put all that together, bar naught and bar one, you've got this. And that's oh give me a. Just to be clear here, I put this C or G over here just so you know what would be the backing chord and what chord you're playing on your left hand side here. But of course this chord also contains the tune note here. So pretty straightforward so far. Everything has been on that middle row and we've had one note on the pull down here. That's why it's got the minus sign. And that's why your chord stops here after beat two because obviously you can't keep pushing while you're pulling for this note, you see? Now in bar two we have this count of and. We've got one, two, three, and. So we've got two quavers here on beat three, and another new feature of the tablature that I put in the, in the last few weeks is this beam, which I put across these two cells to show you that these two notes are quavers, like you'd have a beam across two quavers in normal musical notation. So you don't have to look over here at the counting to know that these two notes are quicker. So the timing is one, two, three, three and so these two cells are three and where the words are where the it's still a c chord if you've got a c g or a g chord if you've got a g d so on the right hand side for the word home we've got button seven finger two push and then we have button six finger one push pull let's just do the right hand for that bar So that's one, two, three, and. And the left hand side, it's the chord you played in bar one. This time there's no asterisk because your tune is over on the right hand side. And that chord is held for two beats. If you're not familiar with the term chord, it's where you play two or more notes together uh, that are different but that sound nice together. So it's this chord here. And the idea is that you play that chord, sustain it for two beats, but lift it off when you play this note here for the word where. Although it would still work behind this note, I think it's a good idea to lift the chord, otherwise you're going to clutter things and you won't hear your tune. So here's the entire bar, bar two. Let's play from the very beginning. So you'll notice I'm not doing an um, pa, pa, um, pa, pa. It was tempting to do that, but I thought it sounded nicer with a more sustained left hand feel. But they're great, these little folk songs to play. Everyone knows them and it's great fun to play them and to sing if you can.